time for our main event. JJ Sanchez is set to do battle with a man he's had quite the issue with over the past few weeks, and that man is former SPW champion, La Sombra. Let's go to the back and have words with the former champion. We just saw the intensity come from La Sombra. He's been wanting this match and he's been wanting it bad and he gets it tonight. You can see the charm, the charisma of La Sombra. These people familiar with him. And you know, when he broke into the territory, people didn't believe he could succeed. They didn't believe that he would withstand the rigors, not only of the training, but of the in-ring competition. And here's a guy proud of his heritage, proud of his athletic skill, and proud especially to be able to settle the score with the likes of a J.J. Sanchez. This is a very complicated situation. A.J. Sanchez, the brother of J.J., selected La Sombra to here's be his tag, and here he is. La Sombra and A.J. Sanchez became tag team partners. They won the tag team championships, ending an historic reign with Sicko and Son of Sicko. But in that rematch with AJ and La Sombra defending against the former champions, those former champions went to use a belt as a weapon. JJ came in to, to assist, and La Sombra got the impression that JJ was there with bad intent. And now there's a little bit of a triangle going on. And this is an interesting situation for uh, AJ Sanchez to be and his brother on the one side, his tag partner on the other, but he's content to watch them rock it out. Rights and lefts, the summer being pushed off by JJ Sanchez. Off the ropes, out of his press, and he goes to work with those right hands. And JJ, the much bigger man, throwing La Sombra off like a child, but La Sombra is resistant. And a bulldog! It could be over as quick as it started! That Latin temper showing. La Sombra now with the Greco Roman knuckle lock. Old school wrestling. Another student of the tapes is La Sombra. Going up the corner now. To the top rope, ascending. And no, he's going for the Hercarano. Oh, he's gotten trapped on it. JJ's too it's big. A very dangerous situation. And a buckle oh. bomb. Oh. Buckle bomb by JJ Sanchez. And as quick as that energy started, it's been ended. Stan, you don't often hear me talk about regulation when it comes to the world of pro wrestling. When it comes to power bombing somebody with their uh, neck and back of their head onto a turnbuckle, they ought to bar that one. You would think so. The damage is very evident. Lasama can barely get to his feet. Sanchez now in control. His brother watching attentively. Oh, that side slam with great authority. 350 pounds is driving. That much? JJ weighs now. 350 pounds. Well, I remember when he was but a pup breaking in under the tutelage of his brother. And uh, he's clearly not only mature, but he's picked up a lot of the tricks of the trade. The Sombra lives to wrestle for these people. And he's trying to rally them now. He's trying to find whatever ounce of energy, any spark he can get to get back on top. The people are definitely behind him. You hear the crowd in unison. Oh, the double boot. Buying him a moment's notice, as it were. Oh. And the drop toe hold. We know what's coming next. Lucha Libre at its finest. La Sombra back in control. And now the high flyer about to demonstrate what he does best. Sanchez, oh, whoa, Sanchez up in a big hurry playing possum perhaps. What action we're witnessing on this week's main event. And here a move that uh, having taken, taken this one personally, not a lot of fun when you take that ride upside down through the air knowing that that hard mat is awaiting you. Oh, La Sombra fighting back now. These two men jockeying for position. And down goes JJ! The crowd once again get hit. Oh, and uh, AJ Sanchez, What's he's interceded. This is very unusual, Stan. And the headbutt from the top. And AJ Sanchez! Dropping a leg on his tag team partner and best friend. Blood clearly thicker than water, than agua in this case. 
He just pushed referee to the ground. And now the Sanchez brothers in a position where they can do some damage. Oh, oh the double from the Sombra goes down. What a turn of events. AJ Sanchez. You see visceral hatred, visceral reaction from the fans at ringside. So invested they are in this match and their resentment of AJ Sanchez getting involved. I am Claudio Castagnoli and you're watching SPW TV. Hey you, yeah you watching this. Have you ever dreamed of being a pro wrestler, manager, referee or a valet? Or do you want to work behind the scenes in the world of pro wrestling? Well, Steel Town Pro Wrestling has an opportunity for you. The SPW Training Camp is open and accepting applications. Our ring veterans will teach you everything you need to know about surviving in the business. So get off the couch, pick up the phone, and call 785-8762 or email steeltownprowrestling at gmail.com and we'll find out if you have what it takes to make your dreams come true. Marius has emerged. <laughs> and he looks like he's got something to say. Surprise package. Why? Oh, right hand. From behind. You're absolutely right. From behind. Right. You're absolutely right. He was having a conversation with the fans, something Mr. Fletcher probably can't do. Uh, there's a chant I haven't heard in a while. Marius being, uh, being made the equivalent of. How long did Chip the Clint Fletcher did he hit hold that hardcore championship for? How long was it? Uh, it long. That, oh, you see Mary's not backing down. Mary he is smart. He went to the back and is coming back to the ring. I will say this. That's Chip. Hardcore. Kid. You know, Marius has been around this business for a long time now. And in the last year, he's, he's really established himself. I, I was thinking, that, you know, earlier, uh, early appearance he made here at SPW television I, I didn't get around to be able to mention it because the action is so fast and furious. I've watched Marius develop and he's really has put in a lot of time gone to the gym and dedicated himself to his craft and uh, and he's he's toughened up there's no question about it to be competing for the hardcore title because the guy has been kicked around the block more than five times. Jim well, Fletcher. Mr. Ring announcer I will say this to you all I did was ask you about Mr. Marius and you established yourself as telling me it's regime. This man is a 24-7 wrestler, studies, tapes, reads books, and is in that ring every day, every night, every weekend. Fletcher now on a mission, a search, if you will. He has told it. It seems that within two minutes of every match, this Fletcher guy has weapons are coming out. But this Ups is what he does. He's not, gonna, he's not like you. Both brawling and technical wrestling. Oh, see now he's mastering he's, eating a chair, and Marius is proving it. That was almost like jumping in front of a car and saying, "Hit me!" He threw the chair right to Marius. He threw it right to his hands. Oh, cut out the cut off by Fletcher, as he does show that some intestinal fortitude, not folding up that fast. Now he goes for the chair, and once again, he does know how to swing this. And oh, Marius. 
Not letting him even wind up. Not even letting you know, him wind up. This is TJ Brad, this is very dangerous because that chair has opened up. And that increased the possibilities of one of those sharp edges. One of those quarters could come into play. Impressive suplex. Impressive. He took him over with no problems there. No problems at all. Marius is looking for the weapons, looking for the wood. Dumps that board. This is slowly turning into a drywall site job right here. You're not far from wrong now, that board covering the head. And here's a chair to ring the bell of Chip Fletcher. Ringing in the New Year a lot later than New Year's. The unorthodox pin on the ply. That was a hands. three count too. Like look at this referee, he's an idiot. He's a moron. That was a three count. Marius now. Letting the crowd know it's over. Upping the ante by putting the chair on top of the board. That's going to increase the damage, the impact. To Chip Fletcher. Uh oh, the reversal. Oh! I thought he was going for the patent pile driver. The back body drop out of the chair. The pile driver would have finished him if he would have hit it on the steel chair. Oh, no, absolutely. Closest hospital here in Winnipeg's a far time away. That's a dangerous move. That's before you get to the wait times. Fletcher doing what he can. Third time. Oh. He better go for the pin after that. Marius's ribs got to be broken. I am impressed. It shows you the training of Marius. The dedication to conditioning. That's what you call a backfire. Uh, a backfire. Rang his own bell. Oh. oh, kick to the face. I saw that tooth end up in the front row by the ugly girl in the front. That is where the bats beat the bell for now. The chair being brought into play in a camel clutch. And he's making him look at the chair. But even worse, he's, he's going to drag it right. It's chair. in his Adam's apple. He's going to rip his Adam's apple open with that. What a and it's over. Tremendous. Genuine the fans. It may not be popular with the fans here. Never mind Russell after that. I don't know if Chip the Kid Fletcher is going to speak. Steel chair in the throat. That's a damaged larynx. Something's going to happen. We'll get the report on this one. I hope it ended his career right there. Dave King here with the number one contender for the provincial title, Reggie Gallagher. Robbie McAllister, you may be champion now, but when you face me, that title is coming home. A proud champion he is, Robbie McAllister, internationally traveled. Been seen on television worldwide. Coming into Manitoba as part of his tour of the Canadian provinces, upsetting Marius for the title, defending it, including against top challengers like Zach Mercury. And there he is, Reggie Gallagher. This is, I think, the biggest opportunity in his career. Has he ever wrestled an internationally regarded superstar? Well, the caliber of McAllister. Reggie Gallagher scored a victory not often it happens, but he's won a victory over the Hockey Talk man earlier this year, or earlier in 2012. And you know what? He's gonna get and build on that momentum, and he might score a pinfall here over the champion. Well, I would hesitate to bet on any man who is garbed in velour in the wrestling ring, but that aside, it is an attractive shade of green well, he's wearing. And it is, it is probably comfortable, and it breathes well. And speaking of breathing well... Fashionable, so yes, fashionable and sensible, but no, you're right, no more fashionable and sensible than the kilt. A door that adorns uh, the uh, midriff of the uh, provincial champion, Robbie McAllister, off the ropes, tackle, down oh. goes Gallagher, oh. Well, Robbie McAllister establishing his dominance here. Reggie Gallagher maybe didn't see that one coming. Oh, uh -oh. I don't think he appreciated it too much. Oh. I, I'm gonna say this one for the, the, the rare, the, the, the rare possibility, the remote possibility, there are any fans that, are, that, that, that could appreciate this old time reference, but gosh, Reggie Gallagher facially, and in terms of his brutish tactics, reminds me of Siegfried Stunke recently deceased great football player and wrestler 
Well, I think you've just dated yourself, Marty Goldstein. Siegfried, excuse me, Siegfried Steinke was, a, was a, such a legendary coach. His obituary got play in national newspapers in America that I happened to mention his career as a wrestling champion well, in areas including Amarillo and Vancouver. And so show some respect for the fact that I attributed stunky like characteristics to the challenger here, Reggie Gallagher. And if Reggie Gallagher wins the provincial title, he might get some national play in the papers as well. I think it would be national news if Reggie Gallagher to walk out of this ring with the title upsetting McAllister. I agree with you, John Henry, 100%. And of course, Reggie Gallagher earned this championship match by winning a rapid rumble that included many top challengers. So he has earned the right for this championship match. I'll say this about Gallagher not showing nerves, although he is taking well, right oh, now, a bit it has of a been, beating now for yeah. McAllister. And, Re and McAllister has a very hard head, so that can knock any man out. But uh, Reg Gallagher must have a pretty hard head, too, because it's so hard, there's not even any hair that can get through there. You may have made a point. I don't know if I ever, ever remember seeing Reggie Gallagher with hair. I, I don't think I have don't either. Think of it. Now Gallagher making use of the second ring rope. Yeah, he had tell, he broke off the count. He's still playing by the rules for now. Well, no, he's actually, well, he's playing within the bounds of the rules, but not playing well, by the rules. You've got to know the rules to bend them a little. Yeah, I think McAllister knows a few oh. rules, and one of the best rules is the best defense, a good offense going on the offensive to defend his title oh. there. Gallagher. But just as you say that. Oh, oh. An authoritative two count by the ref with the baseball cap. But it's going to take a little bit more than that to keep a star like Robbie McAllister down. He's got the provincial title, and you can guarantee he wants to keep it because with championships come main events and money. I got to tell you that Gallagher has really impressed me here in terms of his stick to it. Well, he is really bringing the fight to McAllister. He's not waiting for uh -oh. anything to happen. Oh, the right. Ooh, a wait second a jab, third right jab. Now Gallagher launched to the ropes. Oh! Shades of Dusty Rhodes! Oh, the double sledge! The back elbow! Dusty Rhodes, Putski, Ted DiBiase! Oh, the front big drop kick. kick! McAllister's got a little bit of everybody in his repertoire here in the old there AWA territory. This could be setting up for his Highlander hammer. Wait, not yet! Oh, no! Oh, Wait he a hit minute. that post hard! Gallagher! Hey, he's got some tights! Whoa! No! Way. no. I refuse to believe that that's possible. Reggie Have Gallagher. Have seen the upset? Wait a minute. In all my years, that fist full of kilt. Uh, with a fist full of kilt, Reggie Gallagher has stolen the title from Robbie McAllister. Wow. SPW, the fans are shocked. Is there no justice? A dejected Highlander, Robbie McAllister exiting the building, and he doesn't look elated, he looks kind of relieved and exhausted. Reggie Gallagher capturing the provincial title. Do you like to watch wrestling DVDs? Then you need to check out the Steel Town Pro Shop for all the latest SPW DVD releases featuring the stars of Steel Town Pro Wrestling and superstars of the ring, such as the British Bulldog, Raven, Rick the Model Martell, Austin Aries, and more. Log on to SteelTownProWrestling.ca. This is a long time. The greatest intercontinental champion of all time. And I have to come back. I am coming back to Steel Town Pro Wrestling because I have so much unfinished business. I'm not quite sure how to describe this. I believe Jim Ross would say that James Beaver has... Oh, wait a minute! ...would say that James Beaver has restricted the liberty of Lamb Chop, Jethro Hogg, wanting to save her from these kinds of indignities. And, oh, Beaver using, using the chain and the bell. You know what? I think James Beaver 
He was intending to use Lamb Chop as a distraction, and that's exactly what happened. Jethro Hawk went straight for Lamb Chop, opening up his back Whoa. to an attack. And he's just beating it with the chain. The match hasn't started, so there can't be a disqualification. John Henry, the uh, audience certainly less than impressed with the tactics of Beaver to this stage. And now Hogg being led, he's going to be getting led if he can move him. Oh. Headbutt. You know, Jethro Hogg didn't even get a chance in this one. And they haven't, this is the first time we actually get a guy in the ring. Well, Beaver now, uh, unorthodox. What, what is with this guy that he's got one leg on his I don't think he's gonna afford the, net, the other leg, but the bell just rang. We finally have the match underway. The Englishman showing the power of his right hand and the 25 year vet. Actually, I hate to say it, but knowing what I know, Jethro Hogg's been around a little longer in 25 years. Since 1985. Uh, we remember it well, I have to say, and he's grown in this sport, and uh, he's matured, he's a locker room leader, and he's a favorite of the fans, and a guy that works incredibly hard at what he does to show his wrestling ability, his toughness, to stand up for the, for the really, he represents the farmers, not only in Manitoba, but across Western Canada. Uh, that is definitely true, and I know how you like your old school wrestling, he, Jethro Hogg, has wrestled in the Winnipeg Arena for the AWA against the likes of Larry the Axe Hennig and Ray Stevens. You know, I think the first time, matter of fact, I think the first time I saw him, oh, he just, oh, just ate a oh. chain and a bell in the mush. Well, and I now don't... Beaver with the pin very quickly I don't care in this how... title boat. I don't uh, care how tough you are, a bell right to the face, that's gonna hurt. I recall, I very well recall one of his earliest, might have been his first match against the Crippler Ray Stevens at, uh, at uh, one of those legendary high school TV tapings. And here, SPW reviving the AWA tradition. And look of, at this. Wi of, of Winnipeggers attending live matches, watching the action, watching the competition, watching the athletic ability come to the fore. And with that athletic ability comes the sacrifice. You see all that, that, that the champ is in a very bad way, but he's not about to give it up. He's not about to let the fans well, down. Here, he's I, not about to let Beaver have his midsection not be challenged externally instead of internally by that uh, incredible beaver diet that I've heard about. Well, and the thing with blood is, sometimes it makes you think like you've got the advantage, but oh, at the, the same time, line. it might fire up Jethro Hogg and say, it's time for a fight. The rapid clotheslines. But James Beaver he, doing the right thing, staying on his man, not allowing him an opportunity to come back. You know, Beaver doesn't, uh, he's not typical of a lot of the English wrestlers. Well, you can say that you again. Don't, uh, he's not typical of the English wrestlers. He likes his fish and chips. That is apparent, and he, I'm, sure, I'm sure he likes his bangers and mashed And he likes food. his Guinness. That I wouldn't know, but I'm not surprised. Oh, oh. backside, taking the turnbuckle. When Hogg crawled out of the way, Lamp Chop still uh, with her liberties restricted at ringside. Well, you know what, and this could become a wild card in the match. She's, of course, all tied up. We got a bell in the ring, we got some blood. Things are a little out of control tonight. And now, that barefoot stomping the canvas, the fans responding, the good prairie people getting behind their champion. You know, in preparation. Hogg gets him oh, up, not minute. easy. Oh. And in preparation of this match, Jethro Hogg has been pushing, pitching bales. So you can see that upper body strength coming into play there. Oh. Clothesline on Beaver. But you can see a lot of steam is out of Jethro Hogg. You know, you can say, you can call Beaver, you can say what you want to him, you call him, you know, blubber bust or something, but the fact is that he takes the punishment and doesn't give up. That is Now, whether true. that shows, whether that shows some sort of a tassel fortitude or some other deficiency about which we cannot speculate on television, I leave to the viewers to determine. Now, you see Jethro Hogg finally getting back to Lanchoff. Get it, giving her the help she needs, freeing her. Uh, you know, thank goodness for a man like Jethro Hogg helping out the women. But look at this. Well, th this entire, this entire, uh, this Maybe entire I'll... situation has been extremely unacceptable oh, by any stretch of imagination. Now, 
The revenge is coming. It's being loaded up in Hogg's right hand. And well deserved. Oh! And there. Wait a minute. In a peculiar, very peculiar what situation. What is going on here? Well. And she is removing all her clothing to reveal. What is this? Off come the overalls. Has this been a ploy? Well, clearly there is a fan of the man for the United Kingdom, and it's a surprising turn of events. I can't believe it. They're, they're in cahoots. Well, they might be more than in cahoots, but we can only talk about the about it up to the point that they're in cahoots. This is a bizarre. In, in the, oh! Oh! A low blow of his own. Uh-oh. Uh Oh, wait a minute. Hog is infuriated. Is and Jethro should be at this. this betrayal by Lamb Chop. Wow, Lamb Chop exiting the ring. I think the damage. I gotta say, I'm surprised that she just got out so quickly. But Jethro Hog with the big rights here. So her subterfuge seems to have, um, the impact of her subterfuge, subterfuge seems to have been minimized. I think it backfired a little bit on uh, James Bieber. Well, he spent so much time paying attention to her in her uh, sultry form of uh, of costuming that it gave Hogg the time to recover. And now here comes a freight train. Oi, took a siphon cup. I don't know how to say that in French if I didn't and say it. Jethro Hogg calls that the flying butt pliers. Oh! You talk about me being old school. That's a move that was coined 20 years ago, and he's using it today. Well, he probably learned it in the back at an AWA show, but he is an advantage now. Oh, James Beaver wants none of it. Well, he's not sure. He should have thought better of it. He hesitated, decided to run in, wasn't really prepared. Oh, wait a minute. I think we're gonna about to see a big, a uh, big hog splash. The whole, look at this, everybody cheering on the champ. Oh, right on his pisk. It is over. A championship defense under trying conditions. The odds were. Well, a deck stacked against him and he wouldn't have known it. Wow. Wait. Oh, wait, what's going on here? Does this guy want an autograph or what? Uh. Oh, I think I know that music. Well, it's a hoedown with the world famous, ah, oh, Doink the Clown, and that's the old Doink the Clown. Wait a minute, what, that's not Doink the Clown. That's Rob the The top contender engaging in an assault. It looks like if he didn't get his title match, he was gonna take one. Oh! oh. I can't believe it, Rob Stardom pretending to be Doink the Clown, attacking Jethro Hogg here. I think the message is clear. The, this is, the message is that stardom, having taken advantage of a weakened, of a weakened Jethro Hogg, now engaging in an offensive offensive, offensive in its circumstance and offensive in its tactics. What is and now demanding the microphone to address the audience. There we have it, the challenge. Rob Stardom wants Jethro Hogg at the SPW 5th anniversary show. Stardom has uh, issued a strong statement. The, the grizzled 13 year veteran resorting to costumes, clown costumes and face paint in order to take effect a regime of terror. And this can only be described as a terror attack on wow. Jethro Hogg. Misleading him through, 
through falsified identity. I wish somebody would just give that guy his autograph and then he could go back to where he belongs. Well, I think that might have been his new manager or agent. Yeah, give him an autograph and he can head on up the road. In the meantime, you see Hogg much the worse for wear. And I mean much. Well, Ralph Stardom wasn't going to be given a title match, so he took one. Uh, well, he's, he's made his presence felt, and this creates a scenario where the champion might be chasing the challenger. AJ Sanchez, you and I have been friends for a long time. Not only friends, but partners. And he came to the day that we were SPW's tag team champion. And now you decided to regroup with your brother. Well, I'll tell you what, you regroup with your brother, you turn your back on me, no one turns it back on me. I challenge you to a one-on-one -on, -one on SPW, biggest station of them all, the anniversary show, the fifth anniversary show. I challenge you to a one-on-one -on -one match. The anniversary show, I will see you there. Five long years. Steel Town Pro Wrestling has been in operation running towns all over Manitoba, and it comes down to this. It comes down to AJ Sanchez versus the extreme luchador, La Sombra. La Sombra? I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You better believe. Fifth anniversary show? You thought you'd seen it all? Well, my friend, you haven't seen anything yet. There it is. You got the title now. You beat me. I want my rematch. I want it. Fifth anniversary show, FBW. You, me, Chip Fletcher. I told you I was coming for the SPW Hardcore title. I told you I was coming for you, and I did it, because I'm true to my word. I'm a self-fulfilling prophecy. And now you want a rematch against me, and that's just fine. You want to challenge me? I'll see you at the SPW 5th Anniversary Show. Rob Stardom, you proved something to me. You are real crazy. You dressed up like Doink the Clown, and you come out and you bash up me? Well, you're going to see who's real crazy. At the 5th Anniversary Show, I'm going to be over crazy. I'm going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. Ah!